You've got a ton of options for pistol caliber carbines, but is SIG's MPXK really worth the almost $1,500 price of admission? Well, I'm flattered if perhaps a little bit concerned that you'd trust a guy with a weird mullet thing for any kind of financial advice, but in any case, stay tuned. What is up guys, my name is John with pptactical.com. I'm doing finger guns, I don't know why, it felt okay, but we're your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things finger guns. We review a pretty good amount of PCC offerings currently on the market around these here parts. And if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, maybe you know what I'm about to say here. AR platforms, no matter what cartridge they're chambered in at a certain point, all kind of feel a little bit samesy to me. Which isn't to say that that's necessarily a bad thing, as obviously the AR is one of the most prolific firearm designs of all time with good reason. And there are plenty of companies and consumers perfectly content with putting out and purchasing slightly different variations of a formula that's proven to work well enough. However, the SIG MPX isn't quite that, even if it's tracing some obvious familiar shapes in its overall design. As compared to the vast, vast majority of pistol caliber carbines on the market that utilize a direct blowback system, SIG's MPX instead incorporates a short stroke gas piston and a locking rotating bolt, meaning that a piston is driven rearwards by gas as a round is fired, causing it to impact the bolt and send it further rearwards as well. Although the piston doesn't travel the full length to the rear of the gun like you'd find on long stroke systems such as that of the Kalashnikov family. Ostensibly, this means that you should have a much more reliable system overall when compared to the slew of 9mm AR platforms that just spew gas and carbon directly into the chamber to cycle the gun, with a softer recoil profile to boot. From front to back, our MPXK came stock with a 4.5 inch cold hammer forged barrel with a 1 in 10 twist crowned with what's essentially SIG's version of a birdcage. Although it should be noted that the thread pitch is different from that typically found on AR platforms, instead opting for 13.5 by 1 left-handed Euro standard threads. The handguard is quite tiny and offers two M-lock slots apiece on the three, six and nine o'clock positions with a picatinny rail up top that sits flush with the optic rail on the receiver itself. As compared to a normal AR-15 platform where you've got a barrel nut holding your handguard in place, the MPX's handguard can be removed by simply popping out the front receiver pin. And while I've never personally found much of a use for the quick swap handguard gimmick, it is useful for installing handguard accessories or giving yourself quick and easy access to the gun's muzzle device if you need to do so for whatever reason. Speaking of which, you'll notice we're running a Silencer Central Banish 45 on the gun installed through an adapter, which ran flawlessly for us despite some sordid history with suppressor usage that some other folks have noted, but more on that in a bit. Moving back to the receiver, and most of you are probably going to be in familiar territory here. The MPX's fire controls are essentially identical to that of an AR-15 with a few enhancements. Your mag release, bolt catch, and selector lever are all ambidextrous and pretty much exactly where you'd expect them to be. And personally, I feel like they work great. It's always nice hopping over to a new platform and being able to import most of your existing muscle memory from the gun you run the most. Compared to a 9mm AR PCC, the MPX's magwell is flared pretty substantially, which combined with the nice grippy dotted texture of its proprietary 30 round magazines made reloads feel fast straight from the get go with a bit of built in room for error. This stands a bit in contrast to the B&T APC-9 Pro we ran on the same day as the MPX, wherein the gun's magwell has a bit of a weird false lip or ledge up front as a lazy solution to making the gun Glock mag compatible, which I found caught magazines during reloads unless I was being very careful to avoid it. The MPX's trigger, interestingly enough, is a single stage flat profile trigger from Timney, whose products we quite enjoy and run in some of our other AR setups around the office. There's no exception here, and without a doubt, the MPX's trigger feels fantastic. You've got practically no take up before a clean and obvious four and a half pound break with an almost imperceptible amount of travel before a tactile reset, meaning that you can really run this thing once you get some hours in on it. It takes a lot for me to get stoked about a trigger, but trust me when I say that this one, oh, it's good. 
The MPX also utilizes a standard AR-15 pistol grip setup, and while I found that the grip the gun ships with was plenty sufficient by way of having no real thoughts on it one way or the other, know that you should be able to toss whatever grip you prefer on there if that's not the case for you. The upper receiver features cutouts that allow for a collapsible stock to retract in close if you've got one, but as this is a pistol setup, we've got the side-folding SIG pistol brace the gun ships with. It is what it is, and unless you're going to go through the effort of SBRing the thing, it's kind of what you've got to work with. Lastly, you've got a charging handle where you'd expect it, and it works about as well as you'd expect to boot. While I've heard some other folks express gripes about the stock MPX charging handle, I didn't really notice any issues. Although to be fair, I was probably running the bolt releases on reloads for the vast majority of my time with the gun. With all of that out of the way, we got the MPXK out to the range and put probably close to 1500 rounds or so through it over a few different days. The gun ran great, with the notable exception of one instance where a fully loaded 30 round mag refused to seat on a closed bolt despite a good couple of hefty thwacks compelling it to do so. But downloading the mag by a round or two fixed the issue and we didn't encounter it again afterwards. And I'm assuming that's just a particularly spicy magazine spring that'll probably break in over time. Cool. With that being said, there are some pretty well-known issues with previous generation MPXs when water is introduced to the barrel, causing failures to cycle that'll need manual manipulation of the charging handle to deal with. Military Arms Channel has a fantastic breakdown of the problems and an MPX torture test video that I'll drop a link to down below as the level of detail is excellent. But the TLDR is that the issue has been addressed in the Gen 3 MPX by changing the shape of the excess gas port in the gas block. However, some folks have reported some astoundingly inaccurate groups with the MPX when a suppressor is introduced even at close ranges. And while we didn't experience that with our Banish 45, know that that apparently can be a problem. Outside of all of that, I actually had a fantastic time with the MPX, and as I mentioned, felt immediately at home with its familiar fire controls and ergonomics. The gun felt crisp, snappy, and easy to run. And while obviously 9mm isn't really going to induce a lot of felt recoil, the MPX shoots very soft for its size, both suppressed and in loud mode. In fact, it's probably on par with my full-size 16-inch arrow PCC with a muzzle brake, which is pretty impressive considering the 12-inch barrel difference between the two. As I mentioned, reloads with the MPX felt fast as hell, owing to the combination of the gun's yeet assist mag release, easy to manipulate bolt controls, and the unobtainium dank robber I built specifically to have a modular platform capable of accepting multiple different types of subgun magazines for the duration of the time I spent in Texas. The SIG Romeo MSR we had mounted worked great as well, allowing for pretty fast target acquisition, running steel at close range, and the Hollow Sun Visible Laser unit did its job admirably for nighttime stuff outside of one instance of losing at zero due to a loose mount, but that's pretty squarely on us. So where then does all of that leave us? The MPX was easily one of the highlights of the huge pile of guns I got to screw around with over the course of an entire week. And when that pile also includes bucket list gats like the MP7 and P90, that's really saying something. The combination of familiar ergonomics in a sensibly laid out package is a winning one in my book, despite some known issues that may require some additional monetary input on your end to solve if you wind up trying to mount a can that the original MPX barrel doesn't play nice with. But even with that being the case, the gun's absolutely worth taking a look at, and I think you'll get what I mean if you manage to get your hands on one to test out. While I feel like I don't have the background necessary to bestow it the sensational title of MP5 killer or whatever, I do think it's a fantastic option for PCC users bougie enough to drop the requisite amount of cash on one. And if that's you, play on, playa. That's gonna do it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the bell, send a video to a friend, tell them about me. I'd like to think I'm pretty cool. Some of you in the comment section are going to disagree with me. And you know what? That's okay. Clothing is an item. Clothing, people wear clothes. And if you want to wear our clothes, great. It's down below as well. My name is John, PB Tactical.